One 20th century French thinker whose work I particularly enjoy reading, but sometimes also find frustrating as well, I'll talk about that in a moment, is Jacques Lacan. And he's somebody who we associate with the psychoanalytic tradition. He was a practicing psychoanalyst in France, oftentimes getting in trouble with his own association because of the innovations that he was engaged in. Um, but he also fits into the broader spectrum of, of what we can call continental philosophy in general. And his work has been used in, in, and abused, indeed, in many areas. So I'm going to talk about my own interest in Jacques Lacan, where that came from, and why, after you know several decades, I'm still reading him and rereading him and occasionally using him, referencing him, and writing on him. So my initial introduction to Jacques Lacan came in part through my, my mentor, Garth Gillen, who was a philosophy professor at Southern Illinois University, the guy who I eventually did my, my dissertation with. And I took a lot of courses with, with Garth. And Garth was a really interesting fellow. He was, he was kind of withdrawn from the department until a new crop of graduate students got there. And he was close to retirement. He'd actually earned not only a PhD in philosophy, but he'd gone on and earned a master's in, in theology and went on and did uh, his work in, in uh, educational psychology, I believe got a, got a doctorate in that as well, and then began um, doing practice. And, and some of his practice was, you know, theologically oriented. He, he was a... a, a um, a deacon and, and minister to migrant workers, but a lot of it was actually, once he, he became certified, uh, in, it, was, it was in terms of psychotherapy. And, and he got into that originally through reading you know, Freud and Lacan, people like that, but then he, he just read very widely. He was a, a great uh, person for emphasizing the need for theory to actually connect up with real life. And when he retired from uh, being a philosophy professor, he actually opened a psychotherapy practice out in Pennsylvania, and that, I believe, is what he's still doing today. I haven't kept in touch with him uh, over the last five years or so. But he brought Lacan in as a reference point quite often in his classes, and so, you know, it was, it was good, you know, I should read this guy, you know. And I started reading Lacan. And I started reading the way I think a lot of people do with, with this book, the Écrit. And this is, you know, like it says, a selection. It's not the full Écrit. And there's some, you know, pretty wild stuff in here. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, but I think this is, you know, very useful for me as a student. You know, it fit in with a lot of the other stuff that I was studying, having to do with, you know, incorporating phenomenology, structuralism, you know, dialectical ways of going about things, and, and psychoanalysis. And what I found really cool about Lacan is he also knew the grand philosophical tradition. He wasn't just somebody who had discovered some theory and, and was, was interested in applying it. So, you know, studying with Garth, uh, and he actually did teach a summer class one time just on Freud and Lacan with a little bit of, of Melanie Klein and uh, Anna Freud and Charles Winnicott also thrown in as well, which was, which was cool to get introduced to. Um, and I, I actually, I'll tell you a funny story. I remember a, a fellow grad student being in there and you know we're walking there's a break in the class we walk into the bathroom and he's just shaking his head and i said what's the matter and he said oh this stuff doesn't make any sense whatsoever i don't this isn't really philosophy and i talked to them and realized that for him philosophy was analytic philosophy and i said oh buddy you're, you're gonna have to like adapt or get out of the class because it's, you know, you're reading Freud right now. Wait till you get to the Lacan stuff. It's not going to let up. And the strictures of analytic philosophy that you're used to, the, the ways that they format stuff, that is philosophy, but philosophy is way broader than that. So you got to either open your mind and, and try to take this in and see what you can get out of it, or this, this probably just isn't for you. And he actually ended up dropping the class. But the rest of us had a, a great time. And, you know, Garth would bring Lacan in in his other classes, and there were quite a few of us that were, were reading Lacan. And then, you know, I graduated 
uh, and began working, teaching in uh, Indiana State Prison. And I was always, you know, still reading Lacan and, and you know, using some of his insights. I never gave it to students to try to work their way through. Um, even when I taught a, uh, yeah, a contemporary philosophy class, which was largely oriented towards continental philosophy, I didn't do that. But then I also participated in a um, higher level seminar. This was for faculty members, and it was at the University of Notre Dame. Um, I saw it advertised, and so I applied for it, and it was with Alistair McIntyre. Uh, McIntyre wanted to <clears throat> look at models of practical reasoning and he McIntyre likes to do things in terms of you know like looking at three traditions and comparing them to each other and uh, if you don't know who McIntyre is this is you know probably his most famous book after virtue if you haven't read it you should read it I'll, I'll talk sometime about my interest in McIntyre's philosophy as well McIntyre also wrote this book the unconscious in which he goes after the Freudians on so many accounts so it was very interesting to see that he would be leading this, this faculty seminar uh, at Notre Dame on practical rationality. And the three strains of thought that he was going to examine were going to be uh, you know, rational decision theory and its roots in Hobbes and Hume, uh, Aristotelian Thomism, right? so we do some Aristotle, some, some St. Thomas, and then Freud and Lacan. And so I applied immediately, and I, I think I got in in part because I was, you know, by far the most junior faculty member participating in it. Um, I didn't have quite, you know, that, that so many publications at that point, but I was somebody who actually knew all three traditions, and I was teaching in a prison, and McIntyre was interested in it. So I think that's part of how I got into it. And there were um, ten of us who were selected. And, you know, they put us up on campus and, and each day uh, for a couple of weeks, we would, we would meet in the morning with McIntyre and then we'd meet in the evening with McIntyre. He gave us a huge reading list, most of which I'd already read, fortunately. And then we'd have these, these great seminars. And it was very interesting to find out that McIntyre was himself so interested in and receptive to some of the ideas of Jacques Lacan. He considered Lacan to be an innovator as well. And of course, that doesn't mean that he accepted everything. He thought that, you know, quite a, a few of the, the ideas that Lacan were, had were, were, you know, not really necessary and, and the way that he, he would frame things was often quite counterproductive. Uh, but, you know, there was, there was a, a point to it. And what McIntyre was really interested in is the role that unconscious, that is not yet conscious, desire plays in our practical reasoning. You know, can we really understand what all of our desires are? Um, can we gain some insight through psychotherapy to reshaping our desires? He was interested in harnessing Lacan for a, a, essentially an Aristotelian and, and, and Thomist sort of um, structure and, and program. And I think that was, you know, a, a great idea. I, I uh, think Lacan is, is, is quite usable in that way. And then I just, you know, kept studying him on my own. Um, it's interesting because I encounter, you know, quite a few colleagues who are like, oh, Lacan, he's just worthless, you know, uh, including many practicing psychotherapists who are like, the guy's a fraud, a charlatan. And I think that, you know, um, they're reacting to something that has some truth to it, but they, they're also throwing a lot of babies out with, with bathwater. Let's talk now about Lacan's writings. Let's say you, you actually you know, watch this and you're like, oh, I want to study Jacques Lacan, or, or you actually made a stab at, at trying to study Lacan and you found yourself stymied. Um, well, you probably started with the Écrit, and this is you know, one uh, copy of it. This is the translation by, uh, I always forget these, uh, Sheridan, right? And this is just a selection. This is not the full Écrit. So you do want to um, you know, get a hold of instead this one, which is the more authoritative version, right? This is uh, Fink's translation, and it's got all of the essays in there. And, and many of these are things that Lacan presented at 
conferences. And they're difficult works because Lacan likes to show off way too much and engage in plays on words and make his writings deliberately more difficult than they need to be, which is why I, I spend some time sort of um, demystifying Lacan myself in, in the writings that I've done on Lacan. I would say if you want to study Lacan, what you really want are these seminars. You don't want to start with the écrit. You want to start with these seminars. Um, they are high-level theory, but they're a lot more readable, I'd say more coherent for the first-time reader. And there he's, he's talking quite often about you know, fairly delimited subjects, and he's trying to get them across to students. Now, uh, these are graduate level and, and postgraduate level students, of course, so he's not pulling any punches, but you know, they're, they're quite a bit easier to, to get through. And you, know, you notice that they've all got different uh, uh, subject matters, right? So um, you know, the four fundamental concepts, that's a very important one. Uh, looks like I, we've actually got two copies of that here. Um, my wife and I consolidated our, our account a while back. This is my favorite, The Ethics of Psychoanalysis. This is actually the one that when, when uh, I was doing that seminar with McIntyre, it was this and the écrit that we were concentrating on. Uh, you notice, you can tell that I use this a lot because of all the post-it notes. But I mean, if you read through this, you're going to find stuff that makes a lot more sense at first than the, the material in the écrit. Not to say that if you don't stick with it, you can't actually make sense out of what's going on in the écrit. But, um, you know... It, it, it's tougher. So I would begin with some of the seminars. As a matter of fact, I would actually begin with this seminar, The Ethics of, of Psychoanalysis, rather than jumping you know, into the, the first seminar. He also has a, a number of occasional books. This is one that I particularly like, where Lacan, who uh, grew up you know, uh, with, with a cat in a Catholic household in, in France, um, uh, you know, says that uh, religion is, is in some sense completely false. He's an atheist, but he also thinks that the atheism that dispenses with Christian ideas is, is vapid and, and doesn't really get at, you know, the psychological dimensions of human being. So a strange position to take, isn't it? Except if you read his, his AK and his seminars, you'll see why he, he, he holds such an interesting stance. There are many people who are critical of, of Jacques Lacan. Um, coming from all quarters. I mean, you can get people from analytic philosophy saying, this stuff doesn't make any sense. It's just crazy Freudianism. Um, you know, psychoanalysis is, is, is to be rejected. And this goes a long ways back, right? Um, and you can find people within the psychotherapeutic institutions saying, oh, Lacan, that, you know, he's, he's a fraud, he's a charlatan, he just said a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense. You can't actually put this into practice. Um, and now, to be fair, there are practicing, you know, Lacanian psychoanalysts, and they have not just remained uh, content with what Lacan said. They actually, you know, tried to put stuff into practice. And some things they're like, well, Lacan was wrong about this, but he was right about this. Um, I think that Lacan tends to get a lot of bad press, not so much just because of his own predilection for writing in an obscure way, but because of the superficiality and sometimes being completely off base uh, nature of much of Lacanian theory, right? And by that, when I say Lacanian, I don't mean what Lacan himself actually said, did, wrote, thought. I mean what, you know, people who are doing film criticism or cultural criticism or pick whatever you like, it's usually some sort of criticism, are using of Lacan. And, and that stuff varies from like the totally dead on great use of theory, which is fairly rare, down to the crappy, you can tell that like this person uh, doesn't understand Lacan and can, and can barely rub two ideas together and get a spark. Um, but it got published in some, some journal. Much, uh, much of the use of Lacan for, 
for film studies is is like that. You know, they totally misunderstand the mirror stage or, you know, other key Lacanian concepts. Um, you know, the difference between the imaginary, symbolic, and real, they, they mess all of that up. Um, and so, you know, just like Nietzsche, I think, is not to be um, evaluated primarily on the basis of, of the asinine things that some of his followers say, you really shouldn't evaluate Lacan based on what it is that, that everybody else is saying, uh, using him. You should actually read Lacan himself. And if you think it's nonsense and gobbledygook after that, that that's you know fine. Um, so that, that's, that's an important consideration. I, I mean, I think you should, I'm not saying that we should just appeal to authority here in the sense of a fallacy, but when, you know, when somebody like Alistair McIntyre takes Lacan seriously, that's probably a sign that there really is something of philosophical merit there uh, to, to take on, evaluate, see what you think of. I think some of my viewers might be interested in, well, what do I actually get out of Lacan? And I would say that, that part of it is not just, you know, particular ideas that he has, um, but I, I do appreciate his general approach, which is synthetic. It's attempting to, to make sense out of our, our experience using tools from uh, philosophical concepts, from you know, ther therapeutic uh, constructs, trying to bring these together in some sort of coherent you know, approach. And I, I think that's really cool. Uh, that, that's what I try to do in my own philosophical counseling and coaching. Um, that's what I do when I'm working with um, psychotherapeutic professionals, you know, for example, trying to adapt philosophical concepts into psychological constructs or helping trainers train better. Um, so there, there's kind of like an agreement in, a, in approach that I like. Um, I do think that, that uh, his, his insight that the unconscious, and I do think there is an unconscious, um, is structured like a language is a brilliant insight. And uh, that means that we'll never really exhaust it. And it's got these structures that we can explore, but we're never fully getting to the bottom of it. I think he's also right that some of these things are in fact culturally, um, let's not say just culturally relative, but but enracinated in, in culture. And and at the same time, we don't wanna just you know slip into kind of a vapid multiculturalism. We do have a Western culture that um, you know, has some sort of key hallmarks and, and highlights to it. Um, and that is part of our you know, vast unconscious that we can, we can bring to light. I think uh, his discussions about desire are particularly helpful and interesting. The notion that we have an imperative to desire and, and to enjoy pleasure, that, that especially here in consumer culture, um, you know, we should take a close look at that. I think he has a very realistic idea of what, um, you know, psychotherapeutic uh, treatment uh, would, would look like. Um, he, he's not aiming for, you know, the, some of the things that, that were very popular at the time, ego integration, you know, partners having mutual orgasms together. He's more like, listen, things are screwed up. And, and when you come to me and you're on my couch or sitting talking to me, you're coming in because things are messed up for you. So we're not going to like look for some sort of perfect epistemological clarity before we proceed. Let's let's go on. And we're not going to, you know, take, you know, pure happiness or bliss or being totally integrated as our endpoint. You know, uh, you can you can keep doing therapy as long as you want. But at a certain point, we're going to terminate it. And that point is going to be when you're, you know, functioning well enough that, that you can understand the narrative that you're in and, and maybe transform it a bit. We're not going to aim for, for bliss or perfect happiness. And I, I think that, you know, the ways in which, you know, again, I, I really do love this book. I, I don't agree with it on every point, but the ways in which he examines our, you know, long tradition and options of, of moral theories um, really quite quite brilliant. So I, I like that stuff. I find his discussion of the various registers quite quite helpful. Um, I think it's it's a bit incomplete. You know, by registers, I'm talking about the symbolic, the imaginary, and the real. Um, so I, I you know 
I'm in agreement with, with the people who say, you know, we should take virtue ethics, which is really philosophical therapy and something like spiritual counseling and psychotherapy and draw those all into one effective um, sort of, you know, theoretical and practical complex. And so Lacan is an important dialogue partner for me in doing that. He's not the only one, you know, I also like quite a few other uh, people within the psychoanalytic tradition, and I like some psychotherapists outside of the psychoanalytic tradition. But he is somebody who, who I think is uh, well worth studying. And um, so there you go.